adding and subtracting integers. The way I like to teach this material is by using examples so that you can see patterns. So I want, I want you to remember some things from your past that you've probably seen before. For example, uh, 2 plus 2. Well, hopefully you know that that's 4. Notice for me that this 2 is positive, as is this one. And your answer is also positive. You just combined the two numbers, 2 and 2, and got 4. So you've been doing that probably since grade school. And and yeah, sure, that, that can be looked at as, as positive negative stuff. Uh, in fact, if we looked at negatives, negative 3 and negative 3. One way that you may be familiar with this is to think about it as debt. If you owe $3 and you owe 3 more dollars, how much money do you owe? Okay, you owe six dollars. So once again, to get that, to calculate that debt, you're just putting the numbers together. But instead of O, oh, instead of writing those words, we're going to put a negative sign. So once again, I want you to notice we had a negative, a negative. We put the numbers together to give us a six, and notice that in front of the 6 we still have a negative. So what we've seen so far in adding and subtracting positive and negative numbers is if you have the same signs you just combine. You just put them together. So you basically add them and uh, you, you, you keep whatever sign you have. And you keep sign that you have. So what about when they're different? <clears throat> well, something that you may have seen before. 4 minus 2. Oh yes, so this is probably not too bad. Hopefully you know this is a 2. Hmm. We can write this as positive negative stuff too, can't we? This is actually the same as if I said, you know what, positive 4 and a negative 2 still equal to 2. Or you could have said, you know what, I have $4 and I pay out $2 of debt, now I have $2 left in my pocket. So you can, you can reason through this plus and minus stuff pretty easily, I think. Notice that I just put a plus there. That's perfectly okay. Uh, it's just an and. You can put pluses in your problems all day long and it will not mess them up. But let's look at one that works a little bit opposite. I mean, well, it works the same way, but it, you think about it a little bit differently as far as how you start it. Let's, let's start with something negative. I owe $6. But I'm going to pay $2 of that debt. You know, so I owe $6, negative $6, and I pay $2. How much do I owe now? I owe $4, right? The way you do that is actually very similar to how you did the top thing. Notice that with these two problems, you had opposite signs. So for example, here you have um, a negative and a positive, and you, you subtracted them, didn't you? You said 6 minus 2 is what you probably thought in your brain is equal to 4. That's probably what you were thinking. A and then you kept the sign of the bigger one. And when I say bigger, guys, no, I'm going to put it in uh, quotation marks. Remember we talked about absolute value where you're comparing the distance from zero. I'm really talking about absolute value here because we all know that a negative number actually is smaller than a positive one. But this is just the way I try to make it easy to understand. You're looking at the, at the biggest absolute value, the, the biggest number if you're ignoring the sign and thinking of it just as a number by itself. Same thing up here with this first one. You had a positive 4. We didn't write it because, again, it's implied. And we had a negative 2. So basically, you subtracted them. You said, oh, okay, 4 minus 2, that equals 2. So what we've seen is when you have opposite signs,
you subtract, kind of like you would think to subtract, whichever one has the biggest absolute value minus the one with the, the smaller absolute value, then you just keep the sign of the larger. So notice down here when we subtracted how we said 6 minus 2. I mean, yes, we, we, just, we just subtracted them the way that was natural for us to think, but then we put that negative on the answer. We kept the sign of the larger. And again, I'll put the larger in, uh, in, in quotation marks because it's, it's not very technical talk. It's just me trying to give you a way to think about it. Let's try a couple examples to make sure we see this. Negative 8 plus 6. Okay, well these two numbers have different signs. So what I'm going to do is say, you know what? 8 minus 6, I'm going to subtract those. 8 minus 6 is 2. The sign of the larger, the, the number that's further from 0, really, uh, is the 8. So I'm going to keep that negative. That's the sign of the bigger. Okay? What about this? Negative 43 and negative 72. This time they have the same signs. So I just put them together. Let's see. When I put the 43 plus 72, that's 115. And I keep the signs the same. 15 and negative 26. Very similar to the first example, isn't it? They have opposite signs, so I just subtract. Let me see what that is. Oh, I guess that's obvious. Okay, so I just subtract. I'm going to get, let's see, 6 minus 5 is 1, 2 minus 1 is 1, so I get a difference of 11. The bigger number was negative. And you can do a string of operations. I mean, you, you can change this stuff up. For example, um, well, I'll do one in a moment. Let me, show, let me show you one more thing. If I had 21 minus a negative 17, be sure to remember stuff that we've talked about before, guys. Even when you're adding and subtracting, if you see those two negatives touching, remember, you can think opposite or you can just think when they when they touch they cancel. They hold hands, you kill them, you cancel them out. Um, so here that's actually two positive numbers and you just put them together. So the first thing you should do anytime is if you notice two negatives touching before you even start the problem, cancel those negatives out. That's very important to you getting the right answer. Let's look at one longer example now. Negative 5 minus 16 minus negative 14. And remember, when you're reading your textbook, the author does tend to put parentheses around your negative numbers. Don't, don't let that bother you. Again, if there's nothing to do in the parentheses, you don't have to write them, and I, and I don't write them. Okay, looking at this one, from what I just told you, see the two negatives touching? Let's cancel those. Okay, so really what we have is negative 5 minus 16 plus 14. Maybe it's bugging you that you see a negative 5 minus 16. If it's not bugging you, who cares? Put them together. There, there's two negatives. Combine those two numbers. But if it is bugging you, remember, you can always put an and in the problem. You can always write plus. So that's what I'm going to do to remind you of that. And then I'm just going to work left to right. I have two things being plused. So I'm going to get, uh, let's see, that's a 1, negative 21, and 14. Same signs, I just added them like always and kept that negative on there. And I brought my 14 down. Now I have opposite signs, so I have to think subtract. So let's see, I have 21 minus 14. Doop de doo this is my fault bubble over here. There's my 11, there's my 1. That looks like a 7, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, yes. So I've got a difference of 7. Oh, and the, the negative number's bigger, so I'll keep the negative on my answer. So that's my answer for that one.